uh, this is Hannah. I have a girl puppet and right. a boy puppet. Hi, Hannah. <laughs> Usually she talks, but I need, need, a, need a, an extra hand. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, so to your point, Child Life has been around for uh, quite a while, uh, over 80 years, I believe, um, and that has changed a little bit in what that looks like, um, but our primary focus is helping children and families cope with the experience of coming to the hospital. Um, our background is in the emotional and developmental needs of children in the healthcare setting. Yeah, so important, and I know hospitals are even designed now to help children just act acclimate to where they are and um, and during telethons we raise money to buy you tools that you use on so many different levels but um, Hannah here um, so she's a puppet obviously she which is. is why you needed yeah. another hand and she seems pretty happy and I like her hair um, so you would use this in what way uh, let's just say for example um, a, a child who has language, four or five years old, comes in, um, maybe they're getting a hernia operation. Mm -hmm. um, what, would, what, what would Hannah do in that case? So, so Hannah typically comes into the rooms with me when I am working with the preschool population like you're talking about, sometimes a little older depending on the developmental needs of the child. But Hannah comes in, she chats with them, and she takes on this personality of her own. So. I'm almost in the background. I've actually even had a kid say, what are you doing here? Like talking to me, not even aware that I am needed for this puppet. Um, so it really does take on a life of its own. And what I do is I help guide the children into becoming a doctor or a nurse for this puppet. And then I help guide them through each step of the process of coming into the hospital. So we will take Hannah through getting her vital signs done. She, you can see she has a little name bracelet and pajamas on. And these seem like really simple things, but sometimes kids have a really difficult time even with those pieces, getting the hospital pajamas on. It's that like initial trigger of, okay, this is really happening, something is different. Uh, so even these little things of having the puppet wear the hospital bracelet or the pajamas makes a big difference. They see Hannah as a peer of theirs. So um, so yeah, we really take, uh, take the puppet through every single step of the process, even with getting the anesthesia medicine, and it really empowers the children to be able to take on that role learn about it in a way that is under, it, it's something that they know. Play is how they process their Would world. you say that the biggest goal is to take away fear? Absolutely. That's that's our biggest goal is the to take away the fear of the unknown because if they don't know what to expect, they'll create their own meaning and often it's a lot scarier than what's what's really the truth. So let's say mom is sitting by the bedside while your Hannah's meeting the child. You're mm -hmm. also taking away the fear from the parent. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and and I work with patients as as young as our newborns. I'm working with those patients as well. I'm not bringing in the puppet with those ones, but but we're with the parents and teaching them ways that they can help their own child cope with this experience because their anxiety is up to here and helping them understand a little bit sure. about what to and expect. And that feeds to... Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So when we talk about child life, I know there's all kinds of aspects to it. And for our purposes today, we're really focusing on surgery, um, not so much a chronic mm -hmm. um, illness where you would see the child all the time. But mm -hmm. this is really... I feel like with surgery, it's really focused on an event, pre and post. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So, um, so like the pediatric surgeons we're talking about, these patients are coming in um, at GBMC for for outpatient type of surgeries. So they might be coming in for getting their tonsils out or the hernia repairs. Um, so they're they're coming in and usually spending a few hours with us. Some of them uh, do need to stay overnight to be um, observed, but most of them are in and out within a few hours. All right, so are you usually meeting with the families before or after? I'm or meeting both, both. Um, primarily meeting with them before because that's when their anxiety is the greatest. Um, I do also meet with them afterwards as well, but but my role really is, is most important in the beginning to help the children and teens learn what to expect and coping techniques that they can utilize throughout the process. So other than Hannah, what are some of your key tools that you use to really um, help 
patients who are children and their families to um, approach the surgery? Sure, sure. So other than her, we're, um, we're also using the real medical supplies so they see exactly what to expect. So everything that they will see in their waking hours there at the hospital will play through with um, either just having them explore if they're an older child or with a puppet, um, with the younger children, just playing with, uh, with, with toys, with bubbles and um, just regular infant and toddler toys to help them realize that this is a safe place, they can trust us, um, that, that goes a long, a long way. And then for our older children, our, our teenagers, our older school age patients, they learn usually through technology. So we have iPads available and taking them through every step of the process and addressing some misconceptions that they might Which have. Which they may find online. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You would Parents be too. very surprised with how many teenagers uh, Google or YouTube their surgery before coming in hand, and you can imagine that's adding to a lot of the the stress and then the anxiety. That and I would facing. imagine, from your perspective, no detail is too small. Things that the medical community may take for granted, like an IV, or they see it every day, right? Yeah, absolutely. But you kind of can zero in on what the thing might be that's really causing some um, anxiousness for the child. Absolutely. And each age group will have certain things that are common misconceptions. Um, the the preschool age children are very magical thinkers. So uh, things that they've heard in other types of settings, like it's common for people to say, we're gonna put you to sleep before your surgery. But if we think about where they may have heard that phrase before, that can be really scary hearing put to sleep. So, you know, most kids have heard that maybe with a beloved pet. So changing how we are talking to these children, taking all of our information and really making it simple, concrete, making sure it's not something that can have a double meaning in another setting is, is really important to make sure that they really understand to the core what's actually going right, to be right. taking Take place. Right, the fear away. John, did you have a question? I actually have a few questions, if that's okay. okay. Um, First question is, does, it, does child life assist patients coming out of anesthesia? We do. Um, most children coming out of anesthesia are um, a little fussy, a little irritable. They feel strange. Anesthesia can also really mess with your emotions, so that logic is not quite there yet. So there are things that we can do, things that we encourage the parents to do as well. Uh, we, we do encourage parents to, to hold their children, to talk to them, let them know that they're there. Um, we, we do that as well. We validate the feelings that we are seeing that they have expressed. Um, but we also tell the parents that it, it takes time. It takes some time for that anesthesia to wear off and that logic is then able to enter in again. So, so we do we do help refocus the attention and we also try and help keep the stimulation a little bit lower during that um, first period of waking up. These uh, next two questions are somewhat related, so I'll ask them sure. back to back. Uh, do you have advice for parents whose child is undergoing surgery? That's part one. And the other part is, if a patient's sibling is very anxious mm. about surgery, do you work with the sibling too? Okay, so I'll answer the first question, um, which um, you were speaking to. If you have any tips for parents. Tips for parents, yeah. okay. Pre-surgery. Yes, so, um, so there are definitely a few things that can be done. Um, one of the ones that kids are most excited about, I encourage parents to have their children help pack a backpack of things to bring to the hospital. So they could bring in, you know, a couple of little toys, favorite crafts. They could um, bring in a tablet. There's going to be a little bit of wait time while in the um, the surgical center before and afterwards. So it's helpful for them to have something to do to really direct that nervous energy towards. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing that can be done is having the parent actually check in with themselves. What am I feeling? What do I need to do to make sure that I'm really taking care of my own needs so then I can uh, take care of my child a little bit better? Because if you're not taking care of your own needs, then you can't be as present for your child. Parents put the oxygen mask on first. Absolutely, yes. yeah. And that could mean something as simple as one parent stepping out, taking a break for a couple of minutes, or sneaking away to get a snack. 
I know a lot of parents are like, oh, my child can't have anything to eat before coming into the operating room. I'm not going to either. And then they're not their, their best um, as they could be. Um, and then the last piece of that that is probably the most important is to validate those emotions that you see your child exhibiting, whether they are saying them or not. Um, just validate what you see and let them know every step of the way right. you will be right here. Which supporting. often means just repeating what they say. Exactly. Without. Mm -hmm making mm -hmm. them qualify. and then then the the next question about the siblings absolutely if there is a, a sibling there that is having a really difficult time um, with their their brother or sister coming into the operating room we will do some of the same exact things I anytime there's a sibling that is there in the preoperative area I invite them into the play that we're doing because they're just as worried. They they want to learn about what to expect and have their own um, questions and concerns addressed as well. Thanks, John. I would think there would have to be a lot of you um, that because when you start working with a child or a family, you're never really quite sure how much time they're going to need from you. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you might feel the need to stay there for a very long time. There, so so within um, <clears throat> excuse me within our unit in the outpatient care setting, it's just me in there, um, one of us there during a shift, and then um, it's it's a very fast paced environment. I so, would imagine. So we we don't have a ton of time before these patients do go back into the operating room, but it's a constant juggling act of hopping from one room taking care of their needs and then meeting another family and hopping back from, from room to room wherever it's needed. Um, so so it's, it's a juggling act. So you seem like really a big part psychologist. It, we, we all do have a background in, in counseling and play and child development and, and really how a child's development is affected by illness and injury. Do you find it different now these days because children are so informed, particularly the ones who have access to the internet, that you almost have to approach it a little bit differently or at least try and figure out what they think they already know? Absolutely. So so that's really important for us to to learn first about what what the children do know. Um, even, even the preschoolers, I ask them, do you know why you're here in the hospital? And sometimes they're right, and other times it is really far from what's actually occurring. But from uh, even those really early ages up through the teenagers, asking, what do you know about why you're here? What have you been told? And that really gives me insight as to it, the information that they know. Is it correct? Do they have misconceptions? Are there things that they are really perseverating on that they, they're really anxious about? And then we can dive in deeper about what actually truly does occur and ways that we can help them cope with the things that might be a little bit more difficult. Is there anything that, um, and this will be a, a generalization, that you would tell parents not to say to their child? Uh, really the only thing I would advise parents not to do is sugarcoat and lie about things. I know parents really want to protect their children, but the most important thing is to be open and honest. If a child is asking you a question about what they're going to the hospital for or what to expect, just be open and honest. Don't try and sugarcoat anything because the truth will come out one way or another, and then they'll be mad if they were um, not told the truth, right. and that you, trust will be broken. Are there times? long after the surgery, when the child is home and recovering, that they want to revisit what happened to them? Have you found that? And do you sometimes, help process? Sometimes. Um, if that does occur, the, the parents can certainly seek us out. And um, if they have concerns about it, they can, they can let us know and we can help them navigate through that. Um, but it is very healthy for children to play through what they've been through. It's just a way for them to really process everything. So it's not necessarily a concern if parents see that, that their child is playing through everything. It's actually a very healthy uh, way for children to really just process everything that took place. What's your best tool? Uh, does it just so depend on the age? It depends. It really does depend. I mean, r play. Play, and, and that can mean a lot of different things. I mean, even with the teenagers building that rapport through playing a, a quick game of Uno or... Um, Are they the h hardest population to reach? 
Sometimes. It depends. Yeah, it, it really does depend on a lot of different factors. It depends on the temperament of, of the, the patient as well. But How can parents help you as a child life specialist when you come into their lives? They can let us know what, what they've already done at home to help prepare their, their child for coming into the hospital. Um, that way we know how to you know, use that same language that they have already heard. Um, and just parents speaking up about what, the, what their own concerns are as well. Another question, John? Actually, Actually two. two questions. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, Question one is, do you work with patients in the emergency room and inpatient units at GBMC? And then the second question is, would child life be available to work with special needs adults? Another good question. Yeah, great question. So we are in the emergency room and the inpatient area. That's actually where we started at GBMC. So we, our child life department at GBMC is about... A little over three years old now, so we started there Fantastic. with a couple of child life specialists. Yeah, it's it's amazing that we have now started to branch out. So uh, my my area in the outpatient uh, surgical setting was the the next place to branch out once we grew in the emergency room, and we're also now branching out into the neonatal intensive care unit as well. So we've we've grown. There are five child life specialists. Some are full time, some are part time, um, but we we have a great group of child life specialists that are specifically trained for all these different areas uh, that serve the pediatric population. If someone was interested in being a child life specialist, I could I could just see people watching and finding mm -hmm. that that would be their calling. Yeah. What's the best way to approach that? So I think the the first step <clears throat> the first step would be to go to our child life organization page, um, the Association of Child Life Professionals. So, quick way to remember that it's um, childlife.org is is what they would look up. Um, so that would be the first place to really navigate uh, what what the profession is all about, places that you would find child life, and then after that maybe seeking out a, a volunteer experience to see, is this really something that I would enjoy doing? Another question. Yeah, they just, they just keep coming in. Um, <laughs> Jennifer says, hi, Hannah and Jess, and <laughs> wants to know, does the program offer pre-op tours? We do. Uh, so so pre-op tours, what that is is, so if, if a patient or family wants to get a jump start of learning about the experience at the hospital, families can give us a call and we can set up a time to meet before they even have to come into the um, surgery center for, for their scheduled surgery. So it can be helpful for families to have that initial time, it might be a week or two before their scheduled surgery, and then the anxiety is not quite there yet. They can really... And the environment isn't so foreign because exactly. they've been there. Yeah, so, so we can really do a lot of what we do on that day of surgery with going through what to expect in that play type of setting, but when you do that a little bit ahead of time, it gives them more time to process. It also, uh, like you said, that anxiety is not quite as high since it's not the day of. Obviously what you do is so, so vital to the outcome of a surgery, to going into the surgery, to coming out of the surgery. Have there been studies done on um, children who, um, it's hard to know the ones who haven't, but are there statistics to show that the outcome is better? Uh, that there actually are a lot okay. of studies out there utilizing a child life specialist going through um, not only what to expect, that's a huge portion of it, but it's also teaching those coping techniques to patients during those stress points. like having the anesthesia mask on their face. That's an anxiety provoking time for these kids, but we can empower them and teach them ways to cope with that. Um, but there are a lot of studies out there utilizing child life specialists before going back to, into the operating room. And um, the, the studies have really shown that there are really amazing outcomes with these patients just being calmer after their surgery. Sometimes they go home quicker after their surgery, after having a child life specialist visit, because uh, the, those outcomes, when you're less anxious, 
you're not feeling as much pain. And it, it just, it has a, a lot of effects that um, really. Yeah, reducing stress can have so many good effects. Mm -hmm. uh, Jessica, thank you so much. Hannah, thank you too. <laughs> um, and thank you for everything you do and for giving us a, a window into what that is exactly. Thank you.